our ASB president. And she will introduce our interpreter. So hold on. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our spring orientation. Thank you for attending tonight. My name is Izzy Kamen. I'm this year's ASB president. This web webinar will be recorded in English and in Spanish. And if you would like to listen to it in English and Spanish, our language interpretive team will help you do that. Now our language access team will explain the interpretation. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Este mensaje se dará en español y en inglés. Good evening, everyone. This message will be made in Spanish and in English. In order to provide language access, we will be providing simultaneous interpretation in both English and in Spanish. If you are bilingual, you do not have to click on anything. If you are not bilingual in English and in Spanish, you will need to select your language in order to hear the interpretation. If you are on a laptop, you will see a globe at the bottom right of your screen. Click on the globe icon that says interpretation and select English. If you are on an iPad or a similar device, locate the three dot menu, select language interpretation and select English. Esta reunión contará con interpretación simultánea en inglés y en español. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada. Si usted no es bilingüe, tendrá que elegir su idioma para escuchar la interpretación. Si está usando una computadora, usted verá un icono en la parte inferior de su pantalla a mano derecha en forma de un globo que dice interpretación o interpretation. Haga clic ahí, seleccione es español. Si usted está usando un iPad o un dispositivo similar, localice el menú de tres puntos. Haga clic en interpretación de idiomas o language interpretation y elija español, Spanish. Thank you to our language access team. You will be able to find the recorded version of this webinar on our school's website, which is shown here in the slide. It'll be located under the parent section of the website and it'll be titled under spring orientation. Now we will hear from the Madrigals who will sing the national anthem. Hold on, we're going to start over. Ms. Villasenor, I believe we need to start over, maybe because you're muted. We can't hear uh, it. I'm sorry. Let me start this <laughs> over. Okay. Thank you to the <clears throat> thank you to our Madrigals for the wonderful performance. We have some special guests here with us tonight: Sean Carey, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, and Maria Larios Horton, who is the Director of English Learner and Parent Edu Engagement Programs. To stay in the know of what's happening and coming up at Santa Barbara High School, check out our social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook to see what we're constantly coming up with. And now I would like to introduce you to Dr. Simmons, our principal. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, we also have two other special guests that are joining us this evening. Um, our superintendent, Hilda Maldonado, is here, as well as board member, Virginia Alvarez. We want to welcome them as well. Um, also, I want to please um, direct you all that this, you can ask questions. Um, so you'll notice on the bottom, there is a Q&A function. Feel free to put any questions you may have in there. And um, one of us, one of us panelists will respond. So again, just feel free to um, ask any question you may have as we go um, throughout this short presentation. So I'm Dr. Elise Simmons and I'm the very lucky and proud principal for Santa Barbara High School. Um, I would never be able to do my job without an amazing team. And tonight we're gonna introduce you to some of those team members, which includes my administrative team, as well as the counseling team. And then you'll get to watch videos later on of all the wonderful teachers and what they are teaching your children. So my administrative team, um, we have Ms. Kaylee Villasenor, who's also here this evening. She oversees 12th grade amongst many other things, including graduation. Um, Mr. DuPont, assistant principal, oversees 11th grade, as well as, again, many other things. He's responsible for our PSAT that we just did this week. Mr. Fred Razzo oversees our ninth and 10th graders. And he also works very closely with our family engagement unit and is also one of the major reasons why our, our facility, our grounds especially is looking so beautiful. He works closely with our custodial and our grounds team. And then Mr. Mendoza, Dean of Student Engagement. He works with all of our grade levels and very closely with our language access unit. And he's responsible, which we'll share later on, for um, all of the wonderful supports we've been able to provide our families during this pandemic. So I want to begin with some gratitude, some silver linings in all of what's been going on. Um, and I find myself wanting to lean in the direction of positive because it can be hard right now. Um, there's a lot of tough things going on. So let me just celebrate with you some of our accomplishments so far. Just this week, we we're able to host um, for 11th graders, 103 of them, uh, our PSAT. Um, and with that came another 20 proctors um, that supported that administration. Senior spirit distribution, distribution. it was supposed to happen um, yesterday, but because of the rain, we moved it to tomorrow. We're really excited to give our seniors a spirit pack and don't tell them, but it includes the most amazing t-shirt in the entire world. So we're really excited about that. We have assisted 159 families with financial assistance, anywhere from 250 to $500. And we'll talk more about how we are able to do that. Um, Mr. Mendoza and Ms. Maria Jimenez have, in, have already um, conducted 182 home visits this year. And that means we're visiting um, our families that are in the most need, our students that are struggling the most, and we are going to continue to expand that and expand that team. We already have 16 students who've graduated. Even within this pandemic, they are able to work very hard and stay focused and they are graduating already. Our academic support, the amount of office hours our teachers have um, spent with students one-on-one, -on -one, our tutoring that we have, we have a new student club for peer tutoring, our paper tutoring that our students are engaging in. So we just want, we're really pleased with the amount of support we've been able to provide our families and our students especially. And then of course, our beautiful Peabody Stadium, it's finished. We just haven't been able to enjoy it to its fullest extent. And I really can't wait to get out there, especially fingers crossed for graduation 2021 and also 2020, because I did promise them that as well. So these are just some amazing things that have happened and I wanted to share with you. The other thing you might be wondering is, well, when are we going to shift to hybrid learning? And um, for those of you who follow the school board meetings, you may know this already, but I wanted to make sure I share it with you all. There is some new updates. Um, we, the, what's still the same is we are not allowed to open until we are in the red tier. That means we need to have, have our case rate down to seven, seven out of 100,000. Just to give you a point of reference, at the beginning of this week, we're at about 49 cases out of 100,000. So we're moving in the downward motion. So that's great news to celebrate, but we're, we're still pretty far away from that. If you could go back to that for a second. The one thing I just want to highlight is that once we are in that red tier, the new um, policy is that we have to be in the red tier for five consecutive days. 
and then we can shift to hybrid learning. It used to be um, two weeks or 10 days. I think it was two weeks. So uh, more to come on that. I'm trying to, I'm doing my best to stay hopeful. And again, wear your mask, social distance, no large gatherings and do what you can to make our community safe so we can come back to school. And the next one is still me, couple more announcements. Um, every month I host a sunrise sunset chat where we, it's an opportunity for parents to come and just ask questions. I share information. Um, and the next one is February 23rd. So look for the parent square about that. Every month, I share, I share out an olive and gold newsletter that has tons of information about what's going on, what parent events, what we're up to in athletics. Um, it's sort of like a paper version of tonight, our short presentation tonight, but check it out on our website. There's four of them for this year and there's lots of information in there. Something that is brand new that we actually got approval for today, I think it was, is senior photos. So you'll see more information coming um, about this where seniors are going to be able to come to campus and get their picture taken and it's all for free and we're really excited to be able to do that for our seniors. And also there's a student survey that was sent out last week. I'm going to resend it out because we need more students input. Right now we have about 15% across the district. For all of you who are data nerds out there, you know we need like 30% response. So I'm going to send it out again tonight. Please encourage, I'm gonna send it to your, your children. So please encourage them to check their email and complete the quick survey. We really wanna know what their experience has been in distance learning. So thank you. For our yearbook this year, we are having our seniors upload a photo of themselves for their senior portraits. These submissions are due Friday, February 19th. You can scan this QR code here, which will take you to where you can submit the photo. There are also links posted on your student's Neo newsfeed of where they can access this. The yearbook team needs our help this year. You can submit photos of your children in their remote learning spaces, doing what they love and more for the yearbook. Some important deadlines to keep in mind that are coming up are also listed here, such as the deadline for seniors to submit their senior portraits, which is Friday, February 19th, and the deadline for senior dedications, which is March 31st, and the deadline to purchase yearbooks is May 5th. Finally, the senior arrive, the, finally, the yearbook arrival date is sometime in August of 2021. And now I would like to introduce you to Mr. Mendoza, our Dean of Students. Just kidding, it's not Mr. Mendoza. <laughs> He's actually, believe it or not, still out in the rain in front of the library, helping with textbook distribution right now with our amazing library media teacher and library technician. Um, so I'm here instead. <laughs> so he, uh, what we wanted to share with you, just a couple updates around attendance and mental health, mostly they're reminders. Um, even though we're in distance learning, we still expect that students attend class every day. They show up on time. They have their video on as much as they can. And if there's a reason why they can't have their video on, then they should communicate that with their teacher. In fact, I've actually been in many different settings where students have said to me that when their classmates have their videos on, it helps them feel more connected and more engaged. So it's really important that the videos are on as much as possible. And that if students need to leave class for whatever reason, they talk to the teacher about it. And that if it's like, you know, they need to use restroom, that's fine. But if they leave early, that they may be marked um, absent if they don't have a valid excuse. The key is that they just communicate and they're engaged and in class every day. The other thing I wanna remind you of is all of the social emotional supports we have at Santa Barbara High and in our district. Social emotional learning has been important for me. Mental health has been important for me always. And then day one, when I became principal, it was my number one goal to transform Santa Barbara High into a social emotional learning school. And we, and right now in the pandemic, it is more and more evident that we need to stay connected with each other and support each other. If you need help, if your child needs help, if you, knew, if you know someone that needs help, please reach out to us, reach out to your counselor, reach out to me and we'll provide the support that you need. We have mental health support specialists on our campus, lots of resources in our community. And again, we're here to help you. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a hard time and we wanna help you, so reach out. And now 
Um, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Kaylee Villasenor to talk to you about some other really exciting things. Hi everyone. So I just want to remind you of some academic supports we have. Um, so just kind of reminders from the beginning of the year. So continue to check Parent Square. That is our best way of communication to get information from school to, to homes. Um, we have paper tutoring. It's tutoring for students 24 seven. So when they stay up late and they have got a question about their homework at midnight, there are tutors available to help them through their problems. Um, we also have the usual technology support. So if there's an issue with your student's iPad, um, you can email or call our tech support um, helpline and this is through the district. And if you don't know what to do, feel free to give me a call or email me or ask a teacher and we can point you in the right direction on how to support you. Um, another great resource Ms. Dr. Simmons mentioned was um, teacher office hours. So it's great for your student to be in communication with their teacher um, and help out that way as well as uh, paper tutoring. And next I'm gonna introduce our head counselor, Ms. Porter. Good evening, um, welcome everybody. And um, just wanna remind you all, these, this is the counseling team, uh, wonderful team at Santa Barbara High School. Um, just feel free to call us or email us anytime and we'll respond to all your, your concerns. Um, and we were broken down by last name. So it's based on your student's last name. Um, and you can find your student's counselor and then we will um, help and whatever you need. Uh, but just two really important things. So first, we're gonna start fall course science uh, next week with our juniors, uh, then the week after with our sophomores and the week after with our freshmen. And all of our juniors, sophomores and freshmen are enrolled in a NEO class. They open up their NEO, which they look at all the time now, um, under class of 2022, 23 or 24, they click on resources, they'll be able to see the Zoom links for our presentations, a math and science flow chart, CTE pathways, all kinds of great information to help them prepare um, prior to our meeting with them um, during those weeks. So if they just click on that information, they'll be able to know what to do. And then next week, we are doing a junior sophomore family webinar, a lot of new information about testing, um, SATs, ACTs, Promise program, City College dual enrollment. Uh, we just want you to be aware of um, different things that are affecting. If you have a junior or sophomore, we'd love for you to come to our webinar next Tuesday at 6.30. Um, it'll be recorded if you're unable to come and we'll be posting the PowerPoint as well. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Villasenor. All right, thank you, Ms. Porter. Um, this announcement is for students who are taking AP classes. Uh, we want to remind you of a couple things to do. Um, you need to join your AP teachers online section through the college board. And then you need to pay for the exam through our business office. And the next deadline is March 12th for spring AP courses. And if you still want to sign up for the fall um, AP courses that your student took, that's fine. There's just going to be a $40 late fee. So just kind of remind you of those deadlines coming up. Um, and then students are, are completely registered once they sign up through the college board and then pay through our business office at Santa Barbara High School. And next I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Heil. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Just wanna give you a couple quick updates on athletics. Uh, with the stay-at-home orders lifted earlier this week, we can now specifically start to focus on the colored tier system. Uh, for when each sport can be played. And if we're looking forward uh, with our fall sports, that would uh, currently um, affect cross country first, since they are a sport that can um, exist and compete in the purple tier. Um, so currently we're, we're, we're meeting with our uh, member Channel League schools, uh, the other school districts as well, and then the Santa Barbara County Public Health to see how we can uh, map out um, basically how we intend to safely hold cross country meets, hopefully at the end of February and early March. So stay tuned for that. Our other fall sports, uh, such as girls volleyball, uh, girls and boys water polo, football, all need to be still in the orange tier to compete. The good thing here is that with CIF canceling fall sports, uh, we do have a couple extra weeks to work with uh, to maybe extend our schedule into March and April to hopefully get those uh, student athletes an opportunity to compete. 
So we do need those masks on out there in the public and we do need to get those numbers down in, in hopes for that to happen. Fingers crossed. Uh, currently, there are no changes to the spring sports calendar as of, as of today or this week. Um, so those sports will all look uh, forward to competing in March. Again, keeping in mind the colored tier system of when each sport can compete. And we will send out an, an, uh, an athletics update tomorrow that will remind everyone of the colored tier system and where their sport resides. Uh, so we can kind of look forward and you can kind of understand once again, when your sport can compete um, and, and in which tier, uh, purple versus yellow and what that means. Lastly, uh, with spring sports on the horizon, uh, tryouts is, is coming up and we hope in the near future, the, hopefully the, the really soon near future, uh, to be, hold, be able to hold those tryouts. We do wanna remind everyone of what they need to do in order to try out for sports. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a physical on file and we need to make sure we have your emergency form on file. And we will make sure in that parent square tomorrow to send that as a reminder as well and those links as well to where you can find those. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to email us. Um, most of our information is on our website um, on the athletics page. You can always go there to find out, find things out, excuse me, to find things out. And please make sure again, if you have any questions, because I know there's a lot of, uh, of uncertainty with athletics right now, to please send us an email. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Razo, our assistant principal. Good evening and thank you for joining us uh, tonight for the spring orientation. Uh, my name is Fred Razo. I'm one of the assistant principals and administrator for our uh, English language advisory committee. Uh, ELAC is required for any school program with 21 or more English learners. Our English learners are now identified as emergent multilingual learners. We have approximately 145 EML students of Santa Barbara High School. Our ELAC reviews data on the educational outcomes of our EML learners and are a contributing force in advising the principal and school program in the development of a site plan for our EML students. We've had three ELAC meetings this school year. Our last meeting on December 7th was a NEO training for our parents. Our counselors were present and it was, it was a very good meeting. Uh, come join us to meet our families, community and members and Vice Presidents Francisco Gomez and Elizabeth Mendez. Our next ELAC meeting is scheduled for February 4th. I'll be sending out a parent square invitation and reminders soon. If you're interested in attending or have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at extension 5004. Thank you. I'm also the administrator for our uh, CPAC, our Staff Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. The purpose of CPAC is to share information between the district special education program and our school site. Our goal is to increase the involvement of families and students with special needs uh, and um, to discuss needs, challenges, and accomplishments in our school program. We want CPAC to provide the voice and support for our families and our school and in our community. Thank you very much. And just to talk a little bit, share with you about two very, um, three very important organizations that, that uh, serve as an amazing support for our, our school, for Santa Barbara High School. Our Foundation for Santa Barbara High School and our PTSA have been working closely together this past year. And together they have been able to raise $227,000. Um, phenomenal. Our, as I said in an earlier uh, situation, someone said, why is everybody supporting Santa Barbara High? And I said, our community loves us and we love our community. So we love you if you, we love you, but we love you even more if you've helped donate because your donations have gone to supporting 159 of our families. Again, you can see there's $75,000 you've been able to give out in gift cards to our families um, that have been mostly um, heavily impacted economically from the pandemic. We have been able to hire an additional mental health counselor. We have a, we've been able to hire um, He's full-time, Spencer Barr, but we've been able to make him full-time with the help of our college and career, uh, with our help with the foundation. And so he's our college and career counselor. We've been able to support teachers and their learning enrichment grants. And they've also been able to provide financial support um, in allowing us to buy much needed things that are gonna help us to open safely, like a whole bunch of tents, which we're using right now because of the rain. So thank goodness, right? Um, we've also been able to purchase um, some filter, HEPA filters and HVAC systems for the classroom. So thank you. 
The other organization that gives back to our students in particular through scholarships is our alumni association. So we wanna share with you a short video that talks about them. president of the Santa Barbara High School Alumni Association. The school is remote. The Alumni Association is working to keep the school wonderful for our students, faculty, staff, families, and alumni. We hope that you are healthy and safe. Our biggest project during the school year is that we give out scholarships for graduating students and for alumni who are continuing their education. We give $3,000 for someone attending a four-year university or college, $1,000 if you're attending City College, and we also help pay for certifications. Scholarship applications will be available Monday, November 2nd on the alumni website, and they're due at the end of January. You can, we also have an email on our website that you can contact if you have questions. So we, again, we hope you're healthy and safe. Thank you. So those of you who've come to a back to school night, you know, or spring orientation, you know, you're actually at school and then you travel around to visit all of the teachers and you see the classrooms and, and unfortunately we can't do that. So our version of our uh, spring orientation or back to school night for terms three and four is, is a video one. And so what you're going to do is we have curated videos. Um, now, I do wanna give you a little warning. The videos were created for our fall back to school night and the amount of um, hours spent to make them, to make sure they were dubbed for language access was extraordinary. And so we're using the same videos um, as the fall. So the courses, they're talking about the courses. You might know teachers are a little bit different as well as um, there might be a slight variations. Um, so you're just gonna wanna make sure that you email the teacher directly if you have specific questions. Um, so I just wanna give you that little like warning about the videos. They were created for our fall back to school night. Um, where you're gonna find all of this, um, thank you to Kaylee Villasenor. It's under the parent tab on our website. And you'll notice there's a link called spring orientation. So it's, this is where um, not only are you gonna be able to see this wonderful uh, dashboard with all those different, all, every single one of those is a video leading you to a course, leading you to a program. You can learn about our academies. So there it is. It's in Spanish and in English. Um, there's an opportunity for you to fill out a Google form, which is a way for you to communicate with us. Because again, if you were all here with me, I'd be see, I would be walking around the hallways, you'd walk up and say, hey, let's talk about this, or you'd wanna make an appointment with a counselor or with a teacher. You can do that all here in this Google form, again, found on our website. Um, the other really great thing under spring orientation, this, this presentation is being recorded um, and the slide deck will also be there because you'll notice that our slide deck has a lot of hyperlinks in it. So all of that is there for you to go back to, um, if you are talking to uh, one of your compadres, comadres, and they're like, hey, I missed that. Well, tell them to go to the website and they can uh, relive this experience through the recorded version. Um, so when we're, we're almost done, we got one more thing for you. Um, and that is hearing from our wonderful Madrigals again. And this time to honor all of our Santa Barbara High alumni who are in the house here, as well as our, our faculty is our alma mater. So after the alma mater, I'd like for you to take some time to go to our website and explore and check out some videos. Um, I'll also stick around if you want to ask some questions as well. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, everyone, again. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening. And I will stick around for a little bit if you have questions in the Q&A. But if not, you're free to go. Um, stay dry, stay healthy, wear your mask. Um, and let's do what we can to get our students back to school. Take care. I see that there is a question that was sort of hidden within one of my responses and it has to do with canceling advanced placement course, uh, excuse me, advanced placement tests that you've signed up for. Um, all questions regarding advanced placement testing should go straight to Mr. DuPont. Um, his email, and I'll put this in the, uh, his email is D. DuPont, D-U-P-O-N-T at sbunified.org. You can also find him if you go to the website. And there's a question that got sent to me in the chat that says, if my son missed the SAT test, I'm, I'm thinking the PSAT test, because that's what we just had on Tuesday, when is the next test date? And that was our only test date. And uh, we're sorry about that. If you have questions about how to um, part one of the major things about PSAT is, is the uh, National Merit Scholarship. So I would suggest emailing your child's counselor for um, alternative ways to, you can um, be, I guess, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the word, to be in the running for that scholarship. So some of you, and I'm glad you asked the question, I'm going to answer it live, but I also type it. So if you have a child that is coming to campus in an athletic pod or in a small cohort, or maybe they're supposed to come on for the PSAT, there are new, our new screening tool is called, it's coming from Crisis Go, that's the company, and it, it, it's titled Special COVID-19 Pre-Visit Certification. It's our screening tool. So if you're receiving that, it is not spam, it's legitimate. And it's, it's your way of telling us that your, your child it can come to school. They're, they're healthy enough to come to school, or maybe they're not, and you need to tell us that. So please um, make sure you're answering those emails. They come in every morning, a, but you should only be receiving them if your child is coming to school in an athletic pod, a small cohort, and those students who were signed up for the PSAT should also receive that. Um, and if there's, if you're not one of those groups, feel free to email me and I will have trouble shoot that. And Matt, I will definitely pass that along. Tuesday was an adventure, um, with, no, Monday was the adventure with the uh, textbook return. We had hail, we had wind. I thought I was gonna be in the movie Up because I was holding onto the tent. Fred Rosso was there with me. And I literally thought it was going to carry us into the sky. <laughs> so yes. Textbook distribution has been um, interesting. And I know Kaylee and Fred, and I think Marcy got soaking wet today. So thank you for all that you're doing for there. <laughs> but it's just great to see the students, so we don't mind. No. Any, any other last minute questions? I'm gonna hang around for just a couple more minutes. Okay, everyone, we're here for you. Just, just an email away. Just email us or call us. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs>